We're inside Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina, the home of the number one team in the country. Tonight, 10 and nine Vanderbilt takes a shot at the top ranked Gamecocks who are playing their first game after an eight day break. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. Alongside former Maryland and Texas A&M standout Asia Ellison, I'm Brenda Van Lingen, and we know we're gonna watch the number one team in the country tonight, but in Aaliyah Boston, are we also seeing the best player in the country? We could possibly be seeing the best player in the country, and we have a stretch of the season left, but when we talk about player of the year candidates, these are my three right here. We have Kaylin Clark, you all know her, she's leading the nation in points per game, and Alyssa Kinane, great, versatile post player from NC State. But I'll tell you what, Aaliyah Boston, if she continues to play as she's doing, she will definitely snag this award and here's why. Look at how much attention she absorbs on the defensive end. Teams are gonna send double teams and triple teams at her, but she's been able to counter that as she's been more confident shooting from beyond the arc. And when I think of player of the year contenders, I think of the stat stuff where she's able to protect the rim, block shots, get boards, and you see here with the assists, Little nugget here, she's third on the team in assists per game. And Kyra Elsie said it best, when coaches scout Aaliyah Boston, they lose a lot of sleep at night. And I think Shea Ralph probably has too, as Vanderbilt is an underdog in this matchup. But first year head coach Shea Ralph knows what it's like to be the heavy favorite as an assistant at UConn and knows what types of teams give those favorites headaches. And that's what she's tried to assemble here. For tonight, Jordan Cambridge not available, but getting the start is Ayanna Moore. And for South Carolina, Nate late noticed that Zaya Cook is not available, recovering from a lower leg injury. Lily Grissett getting her first start of the year for Don Staley. And Lily Grissett, she got injured in SEC play last year, debuted in her first game this season against Maryland, and is gonna have to step up and play big time minutes in the absence of Zaya Cook. And so we are ready to go here. One of the great atmospheres in college women's basketball at Colonial Life Arena. And South Carolina with the first possession. And as we mentioned, eight days off. So unheard of in a stretch of conference play. And they're well rested and ready to go. Well rested. And Coach Staley said it was great for them mentally and physically. She even said that she thinks they might have taken a lot of time watching some Netflix, taking their mind off of basketball and really just working on themselves in their week of practice that they've had. Sometimes that's a good thing, but that's not a good thing. One thing they worked on all week was not turning the ball over and the first possession a turnover. And turnovers, Coach Staley believes, is what's really been keeping teams in the game to South Carolina and even, you know, in their loss with Mizzou. So they really want to value the basketball and limit those turnovers. Demi Washington out top. Alexander, the leading scorer on the year for Vanderbilt. She misses. She averages just under 15 points a game for the Commodores. You see both teams here on the defensive end. They're really? playing with their heels inside a three-point line. They want to force one another to shoot, take a lot of threes. Boston misses the three, and Cameron Inouye, one of the, our officials, is stopping the clock as the shot clock looks to have some issues. Our officials tonight, Denise Brooks, Cameron Inouye, safe SHO. As they get the shot clock set correctly. Here's a good look at Aaliyah Boston, Don Staley looking on and This is always such a great place for women's basketball. Monday night throws a little different wrinkle into things, but still a great crowd on hand tonight. Bella Lachance with the ball for Vandy. Smith pulling Boston away, but she misses. 0 for 2, Vandy in the early going. Set driving, a lot of contact, but no whistle, and she scores the first basket of the game. And that's a great drive by Grissette, as I said, really having to step up in this game, and there's gonna be so much focus in the paint on Boston and Saxton. And she's only played six games this year, as you mentioned, that injury in at the end of the season last year. She's had some games out with health and safety protocols. Another miss for Vandy, and here comes South Carolina. Diana Moore has the job right now of shadowing Destiny Henderson. Oh, 
Beal stepping through the lane for the score. And that's just a great read by Beal. She saw the double team going to Boston and the late close out there, so she just drove it right to the basket. And Ayanna Moore lifts up for the three-point shot. This is her second start in a row, replacing Jordan Cambridge. High low, and muscling it up inside, Victoria Saxton. Those made shots for South Carolina allow them to set the full court pressure. Moore gonna drive all the way, gets into trouble and has it blocked. Here comes Henderson. Henderson has Grissette ahead and has it stripped away. Jump ball will be possession arrow Vanderbilt. You have Boston with the post up here and not able to get it, but Beal, aggressive attack to the basket, able to finish there on the left. You know, Beal just averages a little over four points per game, but taking advantage of that lane to the basket there. And teams, they're gonna settle off of her because she's not the biggest offensive threat, but it's about what she does when she's off the ball. And that's why Coach Dawn Staley has to have on the floor. She said she's established her spot on the court because of all the little things that she does. Diana Moore with the miss. How about Boston bringing it up the court? Oh yeah, my big girl, she can bring that mm -hmm. ball up. She can do everything. Just about everything. Lily Grissett knocks down the three. That's her first three-pointer of the season. Nine three early lead for the Gamecocks. Vanderbilt has one victory in SEC play. They were able to beat Arkansas, but they've had four straight losses since then. Mississippi State, Tennessee, LSU, and Missouri. But they've been scrappy. Demi Washington right as the shot clock winding down and a good rebound by Kalen Smith. That doesn't happen very often. This South Carolina team, number one in the country, out-rebounding teams by 17 rebounds per game. And that one gets away. It's off Brene Alexander, Gamecock basketball. You talked about rebounds. That's why Coach Ralph said one of her game keys, she really wants to value each possession. And they said she, she said she, they really need to make shots. Grissett driving hard again. Contact, no call, and she scores. Grissett's getting the starting lineup, and she's feeling it today. Nine points already for Grissett. And she had nine points all season coming into the game today and already has nine in the opening minutes. Lily Grissett getting her first start of the year, and she is bringing the energy for the Gamecocks. SEC Network Basketball is brought to you by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G. Here's a look at Champ Staley. Playing a little fetch today at practice. Everybody knows who Champ is. He was named after their national championship team in 2017. He's even got his own Twitter account. It was revealed today, in case anybody didn't know, Don Staley actually runs that account. What? She, yeah, right, runs the account. And funny story with this one, my Friday night under the lights was not a Friday when she posted this, but you know, it's been a long week. She had a week off, so we'll give her the credit or maybe she could probably just blame Champ for it, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes, they, they had so many days off, she didn't realize it wasn't Friday when she tweeted that. But what a cute puppy at, at all the practices, so well-mannered. And, you know, Don Staley has that dog trained exactly like she wants, just like she has this team doing exactly what she wants. Give or take a few turnovers. <laughs> the national championship in 2017, five regular season SEC titles, the tournament titles as well. She was named the 2020 National Coach of the Year in that year that we'll never know who would have won the national championship. Yeah, they were ranked number one at the end of that season. South Carolina was so good, Oregon, Baylor. We'll never know who would have won the national championship in 2020. Yeah, just a great coach and just really done an incredible job turning this entire South Carolina program round. We talk about how she really built it up. 
know, it's really remarkable when you think about what where this program was when Don Staley came and what she's done and how she is such a leader, an Olympic coach, a leader in our country for as a voice of women's basketball. And it's always so great to come to her practices and just learn from her. Boston. Good ball movement back and forth for South Carolina, but an empty possession, and Kaylin Smith with the rebound. This is a great defensive possession by Vanderbilt. This is what they want to do all game. They want to clog the paint, keep the ball out of Aaliyah Boston's hands, and force South Carolina to get the ball around the perimeter and take threes. See if Vanderbilt can convert with the shot. Not able to. Smith off the mark. Still just have that one three-pointer that's gone down earlier by Ayanna Moore. I had mentioned that Grissett had nine points. She actually has seven points. And the quick double team on Boston. Grissett there to get the rebound. Vandy, they're not going to make it easy at all for Boston. They're going to push her out the paint. They're going to be all over her. They're going to double team her. Five on the shot clock. Brie Beal from the corner. Grissette with another offensive board in this possession, but she has it stripped away. Vanderbilt one for nine in the early going. And another turnover. A foul called in the back of the court on Smith and some substitutions as Damari Flournoy comes into the game as well as Sasha Washington for Vanderbilt. Also into the game is Ami here for South Carolina and Bree Hall number 23. Four on the shot clock. Floater too long, and it should be a shot clock violation, and it is, so it will be Vanderbilt basketball. So good defense the last couple of possessions for the Commodores. And I know Coach Ralph has to be really happy about that. They're really just messing with South Carolina's offense right now, not able to get anything, forcing them to take jump shots, which they're not able to make and get turnovers but they need to get something going on the offensive end. No field goals, as you can see on the ticker, 440 and counting. What does Vandy need to do down here? They just need to make shots, and that's what Coach Ralph harped on because they're not going to get too many shots into the paint when you have the trees of South Carolina, so you got to be able to hit those outside shots. Missed by Alexander, the leading scorer on the year for Shea Ralph. Washington couldn't get a hand on it, so it's South Carolina basketball. And we ask what kind of pace Shea Ralph needed this game to be at in order to compete in this game. And she, what did she say? Slow it down. South Carolina wants to play fast. They get up and down the court. Coach Shea, she wants to slow it down, make them play in a half court offense, and have her team be able to play defense in the half court. No transition. Ami here picks up the offensive foul. Alexander. She leads this team in scoring. Vandy only averages about 64 points a game. They don't put up a lot of points, so that's why they need to be efficient, like you mentioned. Yeah, defense is the identity of their team, and that's where they focus on. But speaking of points, Alexander knocking one down. She gets her first basket of the game. Vanderbilt continuing in the zone here. See if they can get another stop defensively. It's a big possession right here. Hall driving on Smith, cut off. Bandy packing that lane tight. Five on the shot clock. Boston another three, no. And another rebound for Grissette. That's her fourth rebound in the early going. 
And that's the thing with South Carolina. They're so good on the glass, but especially the offensive glass. Sometimes when they miss a shot, it's not always a bad thing because nine times out of ten, they're going to grab that offensive <laughs> board and make plays like this. Dennis, Destiny Henderson for three. Henderson makes her first basket of the game. Good patience shown by the Gamecocks. That was a dangerous pass, and yes, it's out on Vandy. Destiny Littleton checking in for the Gamecocks, as well as Cardozo. And Bella Lachance checking back in for Vanderbilt. Littleton is one of the great, better shooters on the team for South Carolina, so Coach Staley looking to see if she can extend the zone out a little bit. Winding down to a minute to play in the first quarter between Vanderbilt and South Carolina. Destiny Littleton, that's what she does, but a rebound skied for and retrieved and the putback by Ami here. And I love Ami here. She's so long, she's so athletic, so dynamic, and we'll see her maybe in the game bring the ball up the court too. It's what I love most about her game. She's able to play literally every position. Vanderbilt almost threw that one away. Smith tries to go high-low, and it is deflected by the long arm of Cardozo. And a blocking foul going to be called on Bella Lachance that will send Bree Hall to the free throw line. Ami here working, crashing on that offensive glass, and fakes it and gets through and goes up aggressively for a second chance point. So Hall at the free throw line, seven of 10 on the year. And she makes the first. Sunday at noon Eastern, these number one Gamecocks will be right back here on the SEC Network, this time visiting Florida, also available on the ESPN app. And Asia, Florida has won five in a row, including a win over LSU yesterday, 73-72. Yeah, Florida's been really coming to play, and I think what's most impressive about this is, you know, they just lost Labner Briggs to, to Maryland, so you would think that would make a team kind of fall apart, but they've been doing the exact opposite. In my opinion, I think they've been playing a lot better over these last stretch of games. As you can see, they beat LSU, they beat a and Ayanna Moore banks in a three-pointer when the shots haven't been going down. She's got a couple of threes now as the clock winds down on the first quarter of play and muscling into the paint once again is Ami here and a foul gonna be committed with 3.1 on the clock. That's on Washington, her first. So Ami here at the free throw line. <laughs> Misses the first, a 65% free throw shooter. Averages about seven points per game on the year. And she converts on the second. Mandy gonna be content to end the quarter down 19 to eight. Well, Grissette came in and got the start today and is coming out hot and leading South Carolina thus far in the matchup. So we're about to start the second quarter. South Carolina leading Vanderbilt 19 to eight here in Columbia, South Carolina. Alongside Asia Ellison, I'm Brenda Van Lingen. Glad to be with you here tonight. Leading the way for South Carolina, Lily Grissett with seven points, who got her first start of the year, playing just in her, her seventh game of the year as well. Henderson gets it to go. The third three-pointer for South Carolina. And this is why Coach Staley has Littleton in, able to knock down the three, and that was just great ball movement and great patience by South Carolina. Yes. Littleton, thank you for the correction there. And that's why she is in. She is such a tremendous 
three-point shooter. Washington straight away, but it bounces into the hands of Smith as Vandy starts it over. Moore trying to track down her own rebound, can't retrieve it. And Vandy, they've had a tough time scoring this year, and they're just three for 14 to start the game against the number one team in the country. That's why they're really focused on their defense. And we watched the shoot around this morning, and one thing they really wanted to focus on was pushing South Carolina as far away from the paint as possible. And you see how far their catches are outside the three-point line. And great defensive stop there, forcing a turnover. Let me hear with the shuffle and the travel. Four turnovers now, much to the consternation of Don Staley. And that's what they worked on in these eight days off, is less turnover. She says, we have an identity right now of a team that turns the ball over too much and we need to correct that. Yeah, she said they've incorporated some drills to work on turnovers. She said they even, normally traditionally schools do a ball rack, but instead they were doing burpees. So I would think in my head, I hate burpees. So that's all <laughs> I would be thinking about. The ball would be glued to my hands at that point. Kaylin Smith knocks down the jumper for Vandy. At, nobody wants to do burpees, right? Nobody wants to do burpees. Especially somebody of your size. We're both taller, you're much taller than I am, but burpees are not fun for taller people. <laughs> Me here from the corner. How about that three-pointer? Her fifth three-pointer of the year. Such a versatile player, just able to play both inside out and has so much length, can shoot over her defenders. Henderson backs it out, goes inside, and a beautiful pass to Cardozo, who is fouled, will have an opportunity for a three-point play. Yeah, that was just... Great patience there by Henderson. She drove it in and did a little retreat dribble and saw Cardoso there with the size advantage and just able to completely take advantage and get the bucket. And Cardoso, she's number one player inherited out of the transfer portal from Syracuse. Yeah, the ACC co-defensive player of the year last year, the ACC freshman of the year as she completes the three-point play. The, the foul was on Kaylin Smith. That's her second foul. And Asia, every Gamecock has scored except Aaliyah Boston so far. And, you know, all the focus is going to be on Aaliyah Boston, but that's the thing. When the focus is on her, who is going to step up and get a bucket for this team? And that's, like you said, what everybody's been doing. Everybody scored. Shot clock winding down again. What a block. That time sent back. Sanaya Rivers with the block. Yeah, Rivers getting some length on that and just pushing that thing. Looked like a volleyball spike a little bit and then catching that a bounce. And that's just a great recovery by Rivers. It's five on the shot clock. Gamecocks defense all over and a shot clock violation for Vandy. Five turnovers now for the Commodores. Largest lead of the game for South Carolina. Cardozo again, but she is fouled this time by Demi Washington on the shot. And that was a great play there. They overloaded one side of the zone and Cardozo was just able to flash in and cut down to that weak side block. Able to draw the contact there. So the first foul on Washington. Cardoso on the year, a 67% free throw shooter. And she's made all three of her attempts here in the second quarter. Well, we knew this would be an uphill climb for Vanderbilt coming in here, especially with South Carolina having the last eight days off. But Vandy just having a struggle getting anything to go offensively, four for 17 from the field. It's hard. You got South Carolina's size in the paint. They're blocking shots when they do get into the paint. 
How about oh, that? Though. Wow, what a Great pretty pocket move. there. I spoke too soon. Demi Washington went right at Aaliyah Boston. Take a look back. This is some courage by Demi Washington. Oh, yeah, courage by Demi Washington, because when you're going up against a shot blocker like Aaliyah Boston, but then able to finish it like that, that's what Vandy needs right now, especially when they're attacking against the trees and the paint. Yabrion Chambers picks up that foul. There's the first basket of the game for Aaliyah Boston. And Vandy, they really emphasize this in shoot around to South Carolina. They're very efficient in their scoring and execution off of the baseline out of bounds. Renee Alexander changes directions, pulls up, got it. Alexander now with four points. She's coming off a game where she scored 19 in the game against Missouri, has been a consistent scorer for Vandy all year. Boston, Cars Cardozo, beautiful high-low. And the high-low is it's just so dangerous, so dangerous for South Carolina. And Aaliyah Boston is just makes great reads and is great with making that pass in there to Cardoso. Washington again driving, this time blocked by Beal. Nice change of direction by Rivers in traffic and a beautiful pass to the target as of late here in the second quarter, Cardozo. She's actually got nine of their last 11 points, Asia. Yeah, Cardozo really stepping up big time off the bench in place of Saxton right now. I mean, they're just so deep. They, they come at you in waves, South Carolina. Exactly, you think you catch a break when one person's subbing out the game, but then you have Cardozo coming in the game and it's just more work that you have to do. Three on the shot clock, it, a block, and they're going to play on. Cardozo, no, misses that one, and then she commits the foul on the rebound. And we talked about it, my favorite part of Aaliyah Boston, how dynamic she is, third on the team in assists per game, and she's able to make that read off this beautiful high-low pass. News in women's basketball, we have a new NCAA single game scoring record, and I happened to be there to witness it. Aoka Lee scored 61 points on 30 shots from the field. She was also 15 of 17 from the free throw line. Didn't shoot a three because all of her baskets were right <laughs> around the basket, and it was just remarkable. Yeah, and the biggest thing that stands out to me is how efficient she was. It's not just one of those games where you're throwing up a whole bunch of shots and getting the 61. She shot extremely efficient, and I remember the last time I witnessed someone score in the, in the 60s. It was Rachel Bannum mm. back when I was playing at Maryland, but she didn't get it on us. I think we held it at 40. She didn't <laughs> get it on us, but I didn't think I would see a player get to 60. And to hear that last night, I mean, that is just incredible. Yeah, that's right. Rachel Bannum, along with Cindy Brown, both had scored 60 points. That was the record, and Aoka Lee surpassed it with her 61 points. And it was against number 14, Oklahoma. And actually, this Kansas State team played Aaliyah Boston and South Carolina earlier this year. South Carolina won that game, but Kansas State's got three freshman guards. They're a lot better now than they were early in the season, but great matchup between two of the top centers in the game. Aaliyah Boston has won the Lisa Leslie Center Award the last two years in a row. Up for every watch list award out there. Just an incredible player. And such a humble personality, too. And so unselfish because, as we've seen, Vandy and everybody else put so many defenders on her, but willing to give it up and get others involved so often. And that's what Coach Staley talked about. When she's getting double and triple teams, she's going to move out. She's going to set screens. Like you said, get other players involved with her assist. And it just shows her unselfishness and will to win. Oh, and a foul with two seconds on the shot clock. Sanaya Rivers had 
Renee Alexander dead to rights. Not, she wasn't going to be able to get up a shot and instead committed the foul. So the shot clock will reset to 20 seconds. Tapped away by Boston. Shot clock winding down again. Moore, she's got a couple of three-pointers, but didn't connect on that one. South Carolina, we talk about how deep they are. Right now, the bench is outscoring the Vanderbilt bench 20 to nothing. That's about the difference in the game. And South Carolina leading by 22 here in the second quarter. Yeah, and that's how it's been pretty much in every matchup. Coach Staley harps a lot on how great her bench is when they come to games. And when I talk about teams that are going to be successful, depth and your strength in the bench, I think, is one of the big things. Depth, experience, that's what teams are going to excel and come out on top. You know, this South Carolina team has all five returning starters, all 11 returners from last year's team that made it to the national semifinals. Brent Alexander, Brene Alexander kind of throws that one up. There's just not a lot available for Vandy right now offensively. 16 players on this roster, all the McDonald's All-Americans and to mention, returning every player who took the court last year. Brought in the number one recruiting class, even though Raven Johnson not available. And Cardoso, as we mentioned before, top player coming out the transfer portal from Syracuse. Grissette goes inside to Boston. What a nice pass along the baseline. And Boston upset with herself that she didn't finish. Just great patience here, moving the ball around. Triple team comes, but double team comes, excuse me, but it doesn't matter because Leah Boston still able to get it up, still able to draw contact, and we'll see if she can knock it down here at the charity stripe. Demi Washington picked up her second foul, and it will send Boston to the free throw line. She's shooting 75% from the line on the year. Leah Boston, 11 straight double-doubles, 18 on the season. She's averaging over 19 points, shooting 58% and 14 rebounds per game in, in that stretch. Incredible stats. You talk about a stat stuffer. Leah Boston, just incredible. And doing all of this with efficiency, carrying her team, Number one team in the country. She makes the first free throw. And the second. And one thing I really like about South Carolina's offense is they're not settling for jump shots. They're, even though they're double teaming and swarming the paint, they're moving the ball around. So when they get the defense to ship, they're able to find that open gap where they can throw it in and get it into the post. Yeah, that's a great point because so often teams, when it's a zone, they, they get stuck outside and they don't continue attacking. That's a great observation. Right, and I think that's what really, where Mizzou really had the advantage in the game. South Carolina, they were settling for a lot of outside shots and they made a lot in the first half, but they weren't able to in the second half. And they're showing some patience too. Set had those seven points in the first quarter, gets her own miss, can't score it. And ripping it away is Alexander, and they're ripping it away is Aaliyah Boston. Right place, right time, and didn't give up on the play. Six points now for the All-American. Alexander attacking, pulls up. And same team, Washington has it blocked and she's fouled. She'll go to the free throw line. Well, I'll tell you what, double teaming and triple teaming Boston doesn't matter. She can't get the ball. She's going to score in every opportunity she wants with the quick hands there.
First quarter did not score on three attempts. This quarter, six points. She's got a couple of free throws as well. And she will take a seat. The foul was on Cardozo. Sending Sasha Washington to the free throw line. She misses that one, a 65% free throw shooter. Washington had a great game at Mississippi State where she scored 14 points and 10 rebounds as she makes the second free throw. And Cardozo is going to check out and be replaced by Saxton. One minute remaining in the second quarter. It's been all South Carolina. Andy's doing what they can to slow the pace and play their defense, but just too much South Carolina. And South Carolina not falling into that trap of shooting outside shots. They're pretty much getting anything they want inside the paint. And Cardoso's out now, but she's been doing a very great job as they've been doubling and triple teaming Boston. Grissette gets some, some oohs and ahs from the crowd with that crossover. She's got nine points. Washington kicks it out to Alexander. No. Well, it's just been so tough. Vanderbilt just shooting six of 25 from the field. One more chance. And they can't convert. And South Carolina will take a 42 to 15 lead into the halftime. Grissette getting some congratulations from her teammates. Her first start on the year, just her seventh game of the year. And she's leading the way for South Carolina with nine points. Our halftime score, South Carolina 42, Vanderbilt 15. After the break, we'll be back with the SEC Network Halftime Report. We're about to get started in second half action between the South Carolina Gamecocks. Once again, Zaya Cook out, recovering from the lower leg injury. She is not playing for the Gamecocks today. Instead, Lily Grissett got the start and is leading scoring for South Carolina. Vanderbilt also missing a key piece as Jordan Cambridge on the other bench not available. She was injured in the LSU game, missed the Missouri game, and she's replaced in the starting lineup by Ayana Moore. And, you know, this, this Vanderbilt team, keep in mind, they only played eight games all of last year and shut down the season early. And then they had three key players transfer out. Chelsea Hall went to Louisville. Coy Love went to Arizona. Autumn Newby went to LSU. So a lot of scoring left this team. And four of the five regular starters for Vandy had injuries or were out last year. And so they're playing for the first time in two years. So there's a lot of rebuilding there to go. Absolutely. As Sasson gets fouled, a lot of rebuilding and you have to get reps, and there's nothing like, you know, when you're, when you're off for a year, you're rehabbing your injuries or, you know, getting shots up. There's nothing like getting game-like reps. And I think Vanderbilt, I see a lot of promise for them as they get those reps and as they go on, as they start to mesh together. So Demi Washington picked up her third foul, sending Saxton to the free throw line. In the first half, Saxton just had one field goal made, so that's her first free throw attempt. Well, the co-captain, she's been a captain for three years now, and a foul called, uh, no, excuse me, I believe a lane violation on Boston getting in there a little too early. No, excuse me, that would be Vandy with the lane violation. So Saxton will get another free throw. And Aliyah Boston almost got the offensive rebound again. It will stay on this end. You had to block out a few players like that, but can you imagine trying to block out Aaliyah Boston, as yeah. active as she is? 
can't imagine. There's a strategy that we had, especially when I was at Maryland. We had players that completely had the advantage, especially with rebounding with size. The primary focus was to block them out. Even if we didn't go to retrieve the ball, we could have our other teammates to, to do so. But just the primary focus to block out. Henderson turns it over. Here comes Vandy, and it's a little congestion around the ball, but it will stay Vandy basketball. We'll go back to that last possession for South Carolina. Yeah, you see Boston working, but look at that double team, and all eyes at some point are looking at Boston. And I mean, that's just been the name of the game for scouting Aaliyah Boston for every team. She's going to get doubled. She's going to get triple team. Alexander tries to go past Boston, follows up, gets her own rebound, kicks it out. Moore. Alexander to the corner. She is determined, and she knocks that one down. Seven points now for the leading scorer on the year for Vandy. Yeah, great shot by Alexander, and Great hustle and great second chance opportunity there. That's something, value the basketball, take advantage of each possession that you get. Boston just backs in the defender in that zone and an easy bucket inside. Eight points now for Boston. I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter how many players she has on her, if she gets the ball that deep, close in the restricting, restricted area under the basket, she is going to get a bucket. Rips down that rebound. Five rebounds. Saxton with the putback. <laughs> Alexander with another look. Boston clears it. Head ahead, kind of a dangerous pass on the move, and Vandy going to respond. And that's one of the turnovers that Coach Daly was talking about when he says bad turnovers that lead to, often lead to converting, but Vanderbilt not able to convert on that last possession. Reset from the corner. Saxton works so hard. Talked about her being a three-year captain. Something else is I was just kind of going through and really studying the stats. She consistently has shot 57% from the field every single year of her career. Grissette will go to the free throw line, but Boston continues to work hard inside. Oh, yeah, Boston being a beast in there, and Coach Staley tests her a lot. She said, I want you to come in and dominate, and that's exactly what she's doing. And just such a dominant player, and it doesn't matter how many players you're throwing at her, she is going to carve out space in the paint and impose her will. Four fouls now for Demi Washington, sending Grissette to the free throw line. And the second free throw made by Grissette Washington on the bench. Boy, what a story she is. We're going to talk about that coming back from our next break all that she has been through this past year and so glad to be back on the basketball court nice slip to Washington who scores at the rim three points now for Sasha Washington yeah that's a great slip and just a great read by Bella Chance and sliding in again Grissette continues to take advantage of her minutes on the court. 12 points now. And this is great for Grissette because this proves to Coach Staley that when her number is called, she's ready. She's going to step up. And even when Zaya Cook comes back into the starting lineup, Coach Staley will know that when she goes to her bench that Grissette, she's going to come in and she's going to be able to step up. That's what you got to do. Take advantage of the opportunity that you get when you're playing. What a block as the shot clock goes down. Saxton was having none of that in the paint. And a timeout on the floor. Saxton all smiles after that block shot, but when we return, we're gonna fill you in on what Demi Washington has been through this past year. South Carolina with a big lead here in the third quarter, but Demi Washington of Vanderbilt has gone through so much this past year. Last year, it was a shortened season for the Commodores. And 
Washington actually contracted COVID, was tested COVID positive in November of last year, and she had to have an MRI in order to return. And what they learned was that she had myocarditis because of the COVID. And she was told that she may never play again, potentially. And she was ordered no physical activity for three months and didn't know what her future would hold. But after three months, the MRI showed that it had resolved and she was cleared to play. And what a scary time for her, but she was courageous through it and now is so thankful to be back on the court. Yeah, just extremely resilient. And COVID period, when you talk about the unknown, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, is just scary in general. But to imagine having a heart condition, something lingering after. and. My situation was different, but I've had an injury before where it was potentially career ending. So I know what that's like to have that thought in your mind where I could possibly not be able to return to the court and play basketball. And it's just, it's extremely tough, but to see her out here on the court and performing is just, it's inspiring. And, and I'm just so happy for her. Her father played in the NFL, Dwayne, and she just grew up around sports. She loves it. And, and not being able to be physically active for three months, she couldn't elevate her heart rate over 110 beats a minute. And it just, it was, she just hated it and was just hoping that she would be able to get back. And so we are so happy that she had, and the problem has been resolved and she is back 100%. Three on the shot clock. Henderson waiting for the screen. Washington there to clear the board. Shea Ralph, as an assistant coach at UConn for the last 13 years, said, you know, I know what it's like to be on the other side, to be on South Carolina's side, to be the favorite. And I know the kind of team that was always the toughest, the ones that just kept playing hard and kept bringing effort. And that's the kind of team we want to have so that South Carolina has to work for this win. Grissett continues her assault on the basket. 14 points now. Alexander lines up for three. No, Alexander was seven points. She's three of 11 from the field, one of four from beyond the arc. She averages about 15 points a game for Vanderbilt typically. Washington may have gotten away with a shove on Boston, but it's gonna be Vanderbilt basketball when we come back. Lots of balanced scoring here for South Carolina, but what a game. For Grissette stepping up, she's leading the team with 14 points. And I see with the reverse layup on the other side. South Carolina with a big lead, but we talked about Vanderbilt and building this program. And one of the great players to put on a Vanderbilt uniform, Ashley Early, now an assistant coach. She was an All-American from 2000. Her, seat, her career was 2001 to 2005. And She's back to make a difference. Yeah, and we talked a lot in our other game, Brenda, about how important legacies have been to each team and a lot of respect for Coach Ashley there. And Coach Ralph talked a lot about how it starts with the leadership, the staff, the resources outside of the talent itself. So when she chose Vanderbilt, that's been her focus in rebuilding the program. Shea Ralph there. Her husband is an assistant coach, Tom Garrick, that's to our left behind the graphic there. It's Shea Ralph's first season, 13 years at UConn, where she was part of seven titles, six as a coach, one as a player. Big East Player of the Year during her career. South Carolina, just great patience, working the ball around, getting into Boston, not able to get it, but offensive rebound, of course, and Saxton not able to get it as well. Chamberlain. 
Parker setting the screen. Boston corrals it. Right in front of the South Carolina bench, Don Staley stands up to direct traffic to run a specific play. Boston has it knocked out of her hands by Yabrion Chambers. You take it to the basket, but when you have Aaliyah Boston with all that length, that's what it's going to be. It's, it's going to be a tough shot to make. Boston misses. Saxton rebounds. And Henderson knocks it down. Has to be a luxury when you miss the first shot and knowing nine times out of ten you're going to get that second chance opportunity. And great shot by Destiny Henderson just ready in that corner pocket. South Carolina not a big three-point shooting team. They make five three-pointers per game. They've made five tonight. And Aaliyah Boston just takes it out of the hands and ties it up. It'll be possession arrow, South Carolina. And Aaliyah Boston just eight points right now in the game, but you talk about how unselfish she is and how dynamic she is, a two-way player. She makes things happen on both ends of the floor, and she's been, she's been a big-time stopper on the defensive end. Boston kicks it Ten out. Ten rebounds and three assists for Boston. And that's exactly why she's player of the year candidate. I mean, she's a stat stuffer. She's doing so much beyond scoring. When they take your, when your shots aren't falling and when they're taking their shots from you, what else can you do to provide for your team? And Boston does just that. You know, and the work that she has done on her body over this past year to be more lean, more strong, has dropped the has much better body composition and did that all on her own when she had a game last year at South Dakota where she just didn't like how she felt. She wanted to make changes. And you could just, she, she is sculpted differently as you look at her and just, if you, you look at her improvement in her vertical jump, I mean, that's just remarkable to me. Over six inches increased in her vertical jump. Her speed is better, her strength is better. She dropped the body fat, added lean muscle. I'm looking at the deadlift. Pretty impressive, Over 300 right? 300 pounds, that's, what about, a few of me? <laughs> that she can lift up off the ground? <laughs> I mean, that is extremely impressive. It's Axton with the rebound. I want to give a shout out to Molly Benetti, the sports performance coach, that's who Aaliyah Boston went to when she said, I want to I want to change my body. And of course they have nutritionists and everything, and it was Aaliyah that did the work, but a great support staff around her. You also worked with the great Tim Duncan and I mean who else better to work with than you <laughs> see here? And she's got the fancy braids too, but Tim Duncan just able to help her really expand her game. Both of them natives of the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas. And that says so much about Boston when you talk about wanting to get better, wanting to get in the gym, you know, lose the weight, get her body better so she's able to move a lot better, expand her game beyond the arc. Henderson knocks down another three-pointer. Three for four now from beyond the arc. And I got to talk about Henderson. I love how how long, uh, how much of a way she's come as a player. She's always been, whether she's started or come off the bench, she's always been that player that just does what the team needs her to do. But we see her stepping up and providing more production on the offensive end and has just been very great this season for the Gamecocks. Alexander with the miss. Yeah, Henderson so unselfish. And we've been talking about Boston. She had the assist on that shot by Henderson. Twenty-five seconds to go, about a nine-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Boston gets it back. Double team, nowhere to go. Kicks it out to Beal. No. And Saxton right there to put it in. 
Great rebound there by Saxon, just able to get it on the weak side, right place, right time. And she has such a great nose for the ball when it comes to attacking the offensive glass. And a shot at the buzzer, a nice lift for Vandy. Bella Lachance able to knock that one down. Yeah, Lachance able to get here and hit a little buzzer beater. Get some momentum going for Vanderbilt. She is so big, so strong, so mobile, so quick. Boston deep seal and the bucket. That agility and that mobility. Three defenders in the paint and she still gets the luck. Yeah, we talk about again, my top candidates here. All players that are putting up a lot of points on the board, but again, what separates Aaliyah Boston is what she's doing outside the points, stuffing her stats, and thus far in the game, she has 10, 10 rebounds, four assists outside of those eight points, and she has a few blocks in there too, and three for nine from the field, and just, just completely unselfish. She's doing everything all over the court, and that's what makes her so special, just so unselfish, getting her teammates open and doing, doing whatever she can to help her team get the win. It's not always about the numbers. It's about a lot of other things. And Aaliyah has a lot of talent around her. And the fact that you know she does have lower numbers in a game like that, does, it, does, does that hurt her? Or do you think people can see the value in all of the things that she brings? No, people can definitely see the value in all the things that she brings. And I was actually talking to a friend of mine the other day. I was telling her, these WNBA coaches, when they're watching these games, they're not looking at how many points she can put up. They know she can put up double-digit scoring. They want to see what she's doing when she's not scoring, and that's everything else. And that's a great, great three-pointer right there. But Anaya Russell steps in off the bench and hits a three. Yeah, but Boston, that's what's going to make her such a great player and great have a lot of success there when she gets to the next level. But Still more college basketball to play and just an incredible player. Backdoor pass to Alexander doesn't connect. And another turnover, really just pretty cleanly played game as far as turnovers. That's just the 10th turnover for Vanderbilt, nine for South Carolina. But the Gamecocks have been the dominating force on the boards as you would expect, 38 to 13 over Vandy, has held Vandy to just nine of 40 from the field. That basket that was made by Bella Lachance at the end of the quarter was the first basket they'd made in seven minutes. So it's just been so tough against the South Carolina defense for Vandy to get anything going. Ripped away from Boston on the double team. The season low for Vanderbilt this year is 46 points. They're going to have to double the number of points they've scored in the first three quarters to get to that number tonight. Washington challenged by Boston. Rivers, what a nifty move to the rim. And Coach Staley's got her bench in. And her bench just incredibly productive, averaging about 14 points from the bench alone in SEC play. I mean, that's got to be a luxury to be able to go down the bench and be able to put them in and continue the momentum. Well, Boston has 11 straight double doubles, and she's got eight points right now, so. Her, her next basket will give her 12 straight. I think that might be why she's still in, but now she's going to be replaced by Cardozo, and that might be the last we see of Boston. Eight points, 12 rebounds, four assists. Now South Carolina's entire bench, entire starting lineup on the bench. Moore from the top of the key, got it. 
They really like this freshman, Anaya Moore, a freshman from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Looking for great things for her. You know, she stepped up big time. She works extremely hard, and it said Jordan Cambridge, the leader of the team who's out tonight, is, has taken her under the wing, and she's just learned so much from her. Rivers was fouled on her way to the basket. Yeah, there's a look at Jordan Cambridge, and when we talked to Shea Ralph about who is your leader, she said Jordan Cambridge, and we need others to step up with her out. And so with her out these last two games, you can see that it's just hard to get into offense, and she provides a spark on both ends of the court. Yeah, she's the defensive specialist on the team. You see here she's third in steals. She has 70 total steals in the season, and when you have a team where defense is your identity, yes, that person who gets the most stops is going to be your leader. Aliyah Boston back in the game, scores. And so now the streak is continued. And that's the reaction from the bench. Yeah, Boston comes in. Big girl move right here, scoring on two. Able to continue her double-double streak in the bench and the crowd going wild. You know this crowd takes pride and pleasure in the accomplishments of these players. And so now 12 straight double doubles for Boston. And now she'll take a seat and get a nice round of applause from everybody in Colonial Life Arena. The entire crowd up, giving her a standing ovation. Washington chases down the rebound. Smith faces up. You see a me here, here, bringing the ball up. So dynamic, just able to push the ball up with her size and nothing's more dangerous than a post player that can bring that ball up the court. She loses her footing as the ball gets away and then Vandy converges. The chance went right at her and so a timeout was called though by Don Staley as we take a look at this graphic. Most consecutive double doubles in single season play. That's over the last 20 seasons in the SEC. So we're gonna take a break in the action. South Carolina up big. South Carolina up big here on their home court and the officials coming together because the play right before the timeout, look at Amin here trying to get her balance and then just coming in, LaChance just takes her out. So we're gonna see what the officials are taking a look at here. So Cameron Inouye just came over and said the uh, call stands, the timeout was called. They are saying, I guess, that LaChance was going for the basketball. I mean, she's leading with her hands, but man, she really took out a me here. Yeah, really took out the legs of me here, but honestly, I really thought she was just trying to go for the ball and just going in really aggressive. Maybe a little too aggressive, but it did look like she was going for the ball. So the call on the floor was a timeout by Don Staley because she could see that Amihir was losing her balance. So she got the timeout called before all of that happened. And so that's what stands. South Carolina will have the ball with 14 seconds on the shot clock, 5.59 to play. You got the stack here. I'm sensing a lob play there. And they get it right back to Rivers. What a nice play. Cardozo got it and tipped it to Rivers. Yeah, that's a great pass there. Great read. And the most dangerous person 
is the inbound. You always got to watch the inbounder when they're throwing it in. Demi Washington back on the court with those four fouls. Moore just can't get that one to rattle in. Just anemic offense for Vanderbilt. 10 of 46 from the field. Russell. Hustle play by Bree Hall. Fourteen offensive rebounds in the game for South Carolina. And then a foul called on the drive. And how about that inbounds play? Yeah, South Carolina executes great on that inbound play. A lob pass, but Rivers sneaks in right there under the basket and is able to get in. That's just a great read by Cardoso. Yeah, didn't force it up. Got the ball quickly to her target. A Friday, our gymnastics doubleheader starts with number six LSU in Athens taking on the Georgia Gym Dogs at 7 Eastern. Then number 13, Arkansas, will take on number four, Florida, in Gainesville, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Under five to go here in Columbia, South Carolina, along with Asia Ellison. I'm Brenda Van Lingen. It's been all South Carolina. Everybody's getting into the scoring act, and Cardozo denying that shot attempt. stepped on the baseline. South Carolina was scheduled to play UConn this upcoming Thursday, and because Ole Miss was able to have an open uh, date on their schedule, there was communication between both South Carolina and UConn, and South Carolina made the decision that the race for the conference title is more important than a non-conference game right now, so they scheduled the Ole Miss game for this Thursday to replace the UConn game. And, you know, despite the switch in the matchup, Ole Miss is still, that's going to be a great game coming up. They've been playing very well. Great matchup that's going to come up, but like you said, Coach Staley, that title, having a chance to get that evening out the number of games is Trump's playing that top matchup that everybody was expecting with UConn. You know, and, and Don Staley called Gino to talk about it and make sure, and they were both in agreement it was the best thing. South Carolina played UConn earlier this year in the Islands tournament, and so they will they will continue on this uh, rivalry game. Everybody loves that rivalry game, but this conference race was more important for South Carolina, and Coach Ariema understood and and. Uh, they decided to cancel that game. So you mentioned Ole Miss playing really well right now. They've won four in a row, cons including at Texas A&M, your alma mater, and Kentucky as well. So Ole Miss and Florida are on a hot streak right now. Yeah, big win for Ole Miss. And how about that matchup on Thursday? Shakira Austin and Aaliyah Boston, and great layup there by me here, but I'm excited for that matchup on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Austin and Boston. That's going to be fun. <laughs> a foul call will send Washington to the line. I thought Amihir was going to dunk that one. She's got eight points with that play on the other end. Extremely athletic. They said she has the fastest quarter court sprint time. She's in front of Destiny Henderson, who's actually wow. extremely quick. There's a sign up that if a, an opposing player misses two consecutive free throws, everyone in attendance is going to get a sandwich here locally. <laughs> 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 
Washington uh, made the free throw, and everybody is very disappointed. Oh, yeah, the college kids, they love Chick-fil-A. <laughs> A blocking foul. And we are getting to see some of that elite athleticism that Sanaya Rivers, the 6'1 freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina, has. I mean, she really can get through defenders. And she completes the three-point play. Rivers now with seven points. Just such balanced scoring. Grissette leads the way for South Carolina with 14 points. Boston, 11. Henderson, 9. Cordozo, 9 as well. Ami here, 8. Rivers, Saxton with 7. I mean, such balance. Yeah, a lot of balance. Able to move that ball around when one option is taken away. They have the next person step up, and it's, you know, with Vanderbilt defending, you kind of just have to pick your poison. South Carolina will inbound it with 13 on the shot clock. The kick out to Bree Hall for the three. Now she's got eight. Or not able to connect. Vanderbilt doesn't have anyone in double figures. They're 20% from the field. But they continue to battle. Washington has crashed the boards. Lachance. Can't score it. And that's what Coach Rob talked about. She said, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. But one thing that needs to stay consistent is the effort. That's what she wants from her team. Effort. All 40 minutes of the game. Hall now with 10 points. And Alexander able to get that one to go. Alexander now with 10 points to lead Vanderbilt. But it has been a tough, tough offensive night for the Commodores. Bree Hall with that last basket. Got her season high, 10 points. She's trying to add to it. And the turnover. So South Carolina will move to 18 and one, six and one in SEC play, and they'll face the red hot Ole Miss team here on Thursday night as Cardozo finishes things up. It was an even balanced scoring night for South Carolina but Aaliyah Boston was able to get her 12th consecutive double-double. And South Carolina with the big victory here in Columbia tonight, 85 to 30 over the Commodores. Don Staley and Shea Ralph coming together. We talk about the balance all night, but Aaliyah Boston able to get Get another double-double tonight. Yeah, 12 straight double-doubles she's been able to get tonight, and she's been doing it from all over the floor and getting assists, setting her teammates up when she's getting doubled. That's been a big thing for her tonight. She had 11 points and 12 rebounds and four assists on the night, and that's what makes her just such a special player, and that's why she's potential player of the year here. Aaliyah Boston, such a great game tonight. And that's the one that brought the crowd to their feet as she got her 12 consecutive double-double, 11 points and 12 rebounds. And so our final score here in Columbia, South Carolina 85 to 30. It's the fewest points 
South Carolina has ever allowed in an SEC game as they get the victory. Coming up next, SEC Inside South Carolina Women's Basketball. On behalf of Asia Ellison, I'm Brenda Van Lingen. So long from Columbia.